Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this particular video, we'll be discussing about how you can implement a data science project. We'll basically be discussing about the step-by-step -step implementation process of a data science project in the real world IT industry. Now guys, remember, I have told you in my previous videos also, data science, implementation of data science project is just not creating model and deploying it. There are so many people involved. There are various roles and responsibilities that are basically involved in data science project. So this, if you're a fresher, if you're planning to look towards the transition towards data science, so this will actually give you a brief overview, like how a data science project is basically implemented. So make sure that you watch this particular video till the end. So let us go ahead. So initially, uh, if I just consider with respect to the roles, the first person who is actually involved in the data science project is the business analyst. Okay, so a business analyst. <clears throat> now suppose there, there is a client, right? So there is a client over here. My client is some XYZ. Okay, he wants to implement a machine learning project. So what the business analyst will do and remember guys from this client there are many stakeholders they will they may also be some domain experty pe people you know and this domain experty people and business analyst will be having a lot of discussion and then the business analyst will note down all the requirements okay requirements of a particular project so let me just take that i want to predict the air quality index okay i want to predict the air quality index uh, based on various factors like temperature, maximum temperature, humidity, pressure, many, many kind of features. Okay. So what the business analyst will do, he will first of all, note down all the requirements, you know, so whatever requirements are there with respect to this particular project, he'll be having a discussion with the domain expert people and some other stakeholders. I can also call that domain expert people as the product owner from that particular client company itself. Right. And suppose if you are working for a product based company, it may be some different department. But if you are working for some service based company, you'll be having some specific clients. OK, so once you note down all the requirements and requirement is basically noted down, then what happens is that there will be some two more roles that is data analyst and data scientist. OK, so these people will now interact with each other that is data scientist or data analyst along with business analyst you know and along with the stakeholder will be having a lot of discussion and will try to understand what is the data required in order to solve this particular project you know so this is pretty much important and remember guys while this particular discussion it may happen in such a way that this product based company may be having some more data it may be present within the company it may be dependent in some third party APIs. So they will try to find out from where all they can actually get that particular data set in order to solve this particular project. So this is my project, right? Air quality index. Okay. So there will be some dependency on third party APIs, third party APIs, and there will be dependency on different types of scrapping. They may do web scrapping to collect the data. Okay. So, and again, they may also be dependent to in the internal data, right? Internal data that this client is happening, having, and they may have some, some kind of data already present with them since they are actually working in this particular project. Some of the domain knowledge people will be having those information with them itself with respect to this specific client. Now, once they decide what all data is actually required, then what will happen is that there will be another role which will be coming, which is called a data engineering team data engineering team now this data engineering team will collect all this particular data store it in some database okay it may be some different kind of database it depends on the kind of requirement it may be a structured database like sql like xql or it may be a mongodb which is an unstructured database and again remember guys whenever this data engineering is working you know they may work with respect to different different infrastructures or cloud services you know like aws azure these are the most common cloud services that are used because you can actually create different type of databases in the cloud itself and start collecting the data now there is one very very important thing in this data engineering team there will also be a role of a data architect i'll tell you why this data architect is important but just understand why I'm actually using this data architect. Now data architect, remember guys, suppose I'm taking some data from third party APIs and for prediction of the air quality index, I may require maximum temperature, humidity, pressure, and different types of factors that are involved, right? 
So remember from this third party API, there may be scenarios that I may not be getting all the data in same frequency. For suppose I'm getting the maximum temperature in hourly basis. I'm getting the humidity in some, uh, you know, 10 minutes basis. So the frequency will differ. Then how the data should be collected. It is basically the task of data architect. He'll be designing this whole structure and how this data has to be extracted in what basis it has to be extracted. What should be the frequency and it has to basically store in this particular data uh, database is completely designed by this data architect. And yes, the big data engineering team will uh, there will be developers will be also working with him you know so once this is done once the data is basically collected then it goes to the data scientist okay again i'll say data scientist and data analyst and i hope you know the basic difference between a data scientist and a data analyst a data analyst cannot do a work of data scientist whereas a data scientist can do a work of data analyst and data analyst involves in data pre-processing analyzing the data creating some visualization charts and representing it to the stakeholders. Whereas the data scientist can move one more step ahead towards the model creation, model deployment and many things, right? Now, when I go with respect to this, right? The first step, now this will follow a data science life cycle. Now, different data science life cycle. So the first step will basically be going with something called as data pre-processing. Okay, so they will try to clean the data. I can also say data pre-processing as feature engineering. Okay, very, very important step guys, feature engineering. Let me just write it down completely. So I'll say it as feature engineering, right? And when the feature engineering is done, what are, what are things that are basically done in feature engineering? They'll try to handle missing values. They'll try to see that whether that data is efficient. They'll try to create some more features or they'll also try to create some derived features from it. Uh, apart from that, they may also do normalization scaling and missing basically the missing values treated they'll also try to see how outliers are actually treated you know how the data is getting normalized they'll try to see the distribution they'll do various statistical analysis in this feature engineering guys okay then after the feature engineering is successfully done they basically go to the feature selection whether all the features are required and again various concepts like feature importance correlation covariance everything is basically used in this feature selection considering that whatever features i have selected is it necessary to basically compute the air quality index which is my final output right whether it is important if it is not important then what they'll do is that they'll remove this particular features right then remember guys and in this particular step 30 percent of your time is basically taken of the whole project this is a very very tedious task and it has to be done very slowly because if some things missed is missed right we again have to come to this particular cycle again and it will be again difficult for us because now when I come back over here, I may also have to go back over here because suppose if this is not done, if, if, if that number of features, suppose I require some more features that that has to also be get collected in this particular databases, right? So I have to go back again to this particular team. So this task is very, very tedious. It has to be done very, very much properly, right? Then after this, what will happen is that the model creation will be taking place. Now, when the model creation is taken place, then the model accuracy is detected. If the accuracy is very good, then we go ahead with that. Otherwise, we go again back to the feature engineering, try to play with that particular specific data. Now, if the accuracy is good, the final thing is that deployment of the model. Now, deployment of the model, again, there are various services that are provided by AWS and Azure, and most of the companies are using that. There are some more services like Cloud Foundry and many more. But most of the bigger companies, you know, they are working in AWS and Azure. They may suppose uh, I want to do the deployment of this particular model. I may use a framework called as Flask, right? I may create an EC2 instance in AWS and actually with the help of Flask, I may deploy this particular model and create a REST API and expose it to the front end, right? So various processes are there. Again, there is also a different role who will be doing the deployment process because he will be knowing about various infrastructures like AWS and Azure. Right, he, his task is also to make it scalable and the role is machine learning engineer. Now, usually in the real world scenarios, a data scientist can also do a work of this particular deployment. And most of the startups you'll see that they will be doing the deployment. There will not be a specific role like machine learning engineer unless and until it is a very, very big company, uh, you know, very, very big product based company itself because they have specific people for doing each and everything and they are expert in that particular stuff. Right. So after the deployment is done and a web API is actually created. And remember, guys, this all process, this this feature engineering, 
feature selection this is created like a pipeline this is created like a pipeline why i'm saying it as pipeline guys uh just understand that this pipeline again if if i just say if i just say that this all code will be stored in some repositories you know that that repositories will be in such a way that you'll be taking out different different versions just with one click you'll be actually committing it as soon as that data is actually committed or the new code is committed you know automatically the deployment will be happening so that whole process you know so i'm just calling it as a pipeline okay uh, there is there is a very good uh, tool which is an uh, infrastructure which is called as circle ci just have a look onto this because this will help you to create the pipeline and it is completely for free i I'm, I'm planning to make a tutorial on this circle ci where you can actually create this pipelines commit your code and you know but just by one click of a button it will actually create a docker and actually do the deployment okay so once this is done guys after the api is exposed there will there is usually in companies what they do is that and this all process that they are following is basically done by uh, in a sprint way in an agile way you know so every sprint they'll be uh, they'll be taking a time of two or three weeks and they'll be continuously taking up stories and doing it right and every month it will also be tested with respect to the performance of this particular model and if the model performance is good then only they'll go ahead otherwise they'll just uh, you know they'll again go back to this particular stage and try to work on this particular model how they can actually make it better there is one more very very important role which is called as analytics manager very very rare role and remember guys this analytics manager will be handling the data scientists will be handling the data analyst the team of data scientists and data analysts this will also be involved in designing the sprints like which stories has to be taken on which sprint right on that particular basis this analytics manager also has to communicate with the domain expert to understand the requirements along with the data scientist and data analyst he'll also be playing a major major role because he is deriving he's deriving this whole uh, whole process of actually you know completing up this particular process uh, project so he has to work with various people over here so this was a small overview about how a data science project is implemented again guys there are different different repositories where you can actually commit you can also take different different tools where you can do an automatic deployment you know into the aws you can create that whole pipeline um, this one example i'm going to take after some time just give me some time probably after new year i'll try to use this circle ci you can also go and research about circle ci till then but i'll show you how you can actually create a pipeline over here yes so yes uh, this was all about this particular project i have also explained you the various roles and responsibilities there are so many people involved in this again remember one thing guys data science project implementation is just not about building model model and deployment is just two step there are so many things involved there are so so many things involved so it becomes complicated sometimes and remember if you are not good at data st uh, storytelling you have to communicate with all these people continuously you'll be having discussion always remember uh, it is just not a very easy task you know you have to uh, step step uh, take that step and actually interact with many people in order to do this successful delivery so yes this was all about this particular video i hope you like it please do subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all